Good morning and welcome to the May 16th Council meeting. If you'd please stand, Councilman Lucio is going to lead us in the flag salute this evening. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Our first proclamation is National Public Works Week, May 21st through the 27th. I'd like to call up Joe Lopez, our Public Works Construction Project Coordinator. And crew. Okay, and the proclamation reads, whereas public works professionals focus on infrastructure, facilities, emergency management, and services that are of vital importance to sustainable and resilient communities and the public health, high quality of life and well-being for the citizens of the city of Chino. These infrastructures, facilities, and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of public work professionals who are federally mandated first responders and the engineers, managers, and employees at all levels of government and the private sector who are responsible for rebuilding, improving, and protecting our nation's transportation, water supply, water treatment, and solid waste systems, public buildings, and other structures and facilities essential for our citizens. And whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens, civic leaders, and children of the city of Chino to gain knowledge and maintain ongoing interest and understanding of the importance of public works first responders and public works programs in their respective communities. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emilio, a mayor of the city of Chino, do hereby designate the week of May 21st through the 27th as National Public Works Week. I urge all citizens to join with representatives of the American Public Works Association and government agencies in activities, events, and ceremonies designed to pay tribute to our public works professionals, engineers, managers, and employees to recognize the substantial contributions they make to protecting our national health, safety, and quality of life. Okay, let's all move this way so everybody can be on the TV. Come on. And then, Joe, I'd like you to introduce everyone, please. Okay, I was going to actually pass this down because I really don't want to butcher any last names because I did try to write them down, but it wasn't happening. So once again, my name is Joe Lopez. I'm the construction project coordinator here for the city of Chino. I work in uh, services department. Lupa Mendez, administrative secretary for public works, and I'm located at services. Uh, Alex Banuelos, I work in the fleet department. I'm the equipment, equipment mechanic. Uh, Miguel Casillas, I'm a maintenance worker. Nate Marlinski, I'm the environmental coordinator. Kristen White, I work in CIP um, Public Works, clerk type is two. Sochi Huerta, management aid for waste and recycling. Thank you. And I do have uh, a couple words I do want to say. Mayor, I want to say thank you. It's an honor to represent the Public Works family uh, here today. I do want to say thank you to City Council for all your continued uh, support throughout the year. I know it's uh, been rough. I know there was a lot of projects that had to be approved, and we do thank you for that. Um, I do want to say uh, thank you to the city manager, uh, to our directors for all your, for your guidance and leadership throughout the year. And I do want to recognize 
to all of our staff, there's a lot more than this. We're talking, I think we counted 80 today that are in public works down at services, which is quite a lot. So uh, in connection with this, uh, there is a theme that goes along every year for public works. It's called Connecting the World Through Public Works. Um, we do believe in connecting the community and internal staff is vital to providing the quality service to our residents. So with uh, communication, our job is impossible. So we depend on all of you to help us do our jobs, and we thank you. Thank you. You know, we get angry sometimes when we see t- streets are torn up and water lines are going in and stuff. But then when it's all done, we're so thankful. So be patient. Yes, I mean, we have a lot of projects that we have been doing and are still going to be doing in the future. So, you know, when you see these hardworking individuals out there, be kind. Don't honk at them. Don't yell at them. They're trying to improve our quality of life. So be patient to know when they're done that we'll have a lot better community than we have now. So thank you very much for everything that you do. Thank you. I appreciate thank you very it. Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I always forget to take a picture. Okay, next, we have the recognition of the 2023 Hall of Fame Award recipients. This prestigious award is presented to individuals who have made a major and lasting contribution to the development and progress of the city of Chino and who have been outstanding examples of leadership and service in a manner that engenders honor and respect from a historical perspective for their participation in the community. Tonight, we'll be inducting two new members into the city of Chino's Hall of Fame. The awards presented this evening will be on permanent display in the Chino Community Building. I'd like to call up members of the Chino Valley Historical Society present tonight to assist with the presentations. If you'd come up, please. Our first presentation recognizes Howard Kell. Howard Cattle. I'd like to uh, call up the members of the Cattle family that are here this evening. Please come up. We don't have any members here? Oh, we have the whole family. Well, come up. Come on. (laughs) Mr. Steve Buss is the principal of Howard Cattle Elementary School. He is going to receive a replica that is going to be hanging uh, in our building. Linda Flathers will read what is on the... Yeah, I've got it. Howard Cattle, longtime civic leader, former mayor, businessman, and Chino sports booster, helped turn the community into modern Chino. Howard Cattle was born December 23, 1904, in Fort Williams, Ontario, Canada. At the age of 16, Howard moved with his family to Chino in 1920, when his dad took over the real estate and insurance business owned by Howard's uncle, Alfred H. Cook, a prominent civic leader. Howard attended Chino High School, where he played basketball and football, His position was center on the Chino's first football team in 1923, when they played in jeans and sweatshirts back then. Uh, His enthusiasm for the school sports continued throughout his life. He was instrumental in forming the Chino High Sports Boosters, known then as the Quarterback Club. He served as president in 1949. For years, he presented a jacket to each game's outstanding football player, and a blanket to the season's top athlete. On February 7, 1932, Howard Cattle married Vera Cook, the daughter of an Ontario dairyman. A year later, they purchased Chino Cleaners. In 1938, they opened Howard's Men's Store with a railway express office in the back and moved the Chino Cleaners to that location. Howard would hire students to work in his store and helped others who needed work. 
He retired from the clothing business in 1973 and worked several years with Lou Sapine building vet pack trucks for veterinarians. His civic service included 21 years as a volunteer fireman where he rose to the rank of captain. He was a member of Noble Grand of the Odd Fellows, president of the Chino Rotary Club, vice president of the Chamber of Commerce, and member of the Rancho Ride Board. He gave many years of service to the Boy Scouts and the Little League Baseball. Howard served on the Chino Planning Commission and in 1954 was appointed to the City Council. Six months later, he was elected as mayor of the City of Chino and served from 1955 until 1959. In 1963, he was named Outstanding Citizen of the Year by the American Legion and was an honorary life member of the 2030 Club, a national service organization made up of men and women in their 20s and 30s who have a passion for improving the lives of children in their communities through hands-on work and fundraising. He received a community appreciation award from the Chamber of Commerce in 1966. In 1964, Chino High School's El Chasky Yearbook was dedicated to him. He was an honorary member of the Chino PTA. He will forever be memorialized by the school Howard Cattle Elementary, named after him when it opened in 1988. Howard and Vera had two daughters, Marcia and Janet. Howard Cattle died February 18th, 1992, at the age of 87. Very nice, very nice. Would you like to introduce the family of the children? Or have them introduce yes. themselves? I, I have with me uh, Marcia, Howard's uh, daughter. Oldest daughter, yes. 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 My name is Richard Roth. I'm a grandson. I'm great grandson, Tyler Roth. Tyler Roth's wife, <laughs> Mallory. <laughs> Caitlin Martinez, a uh, great granddaughter. I'm the troubled kid that she took under her wings, Mike. And I'm Steve Buss, the current principal of Howard Cattle Elementary. I have a little story to tell you about Vera. <laughs> I grew up here in the 1950s and 60s, and um, I remember Vera. And I, when I met Marcia today, she looks exactly like her mom. I would have known her anywhere. But Vera, I think, was the first delivery service in the city of Chino. She would come to your home and pick up your dry cleaning, and then she would deliver it back to you. But I remember as a child her coming to our house to pick up dry cleaning. Yeah, it was, it's a great memory. Yeah, so. Well, thank you all for being here this evening. You know, it's so very important for us to remember our history and those that really built this community, and, and Mr. Cattle certainly, and his wife, Vera, were certainly, certainly instrumental in making Chino what it is today. Thank you very much for being here. Okay, Lori, come here and that's easier sound to announce that. Oh. <laughs> She, she door was right across the street. She does right oh on the grass. Oh, okay, all right. Next is Dorothy Wolfert Greer. Um, I'd like to call up members of Dorothy's family. Would you please join us up front? Steve Halstead, Vice President of the Chino Valley Historical Society, will be our honoree this evening. That will read the award. Let's move this way so they can be in the TV. Let's 
Excellent. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we're here to honor a pretty amazing lady, Dorothy Wilford Greer. Dorothy was a longtime Chino resident, teacher, and administrator for Chino Valley Unified School District, and known for her civic engagement and perseverance of Chino history. Dorothy was born March 10, 1927, in Staten, California. Dorothy graduated from the University of Redlands, where she met her husband, Richard Greer. Longtime Chino resident, they were married in 1949 and moved to Chino in 1950. They had two children, son David and daughter Julie. Richard died at the young age of 35 in 1962 and left Dorothy widowed with two young children. Dorothy was an educator with the Chino Valley Unified School District for 31 years. She began as a teacher, promoted to vice principal, and then to principal. She served at Newman Elementary, Glenmead Elementary, Doris Dickens Elementary, Anna Borbett Elementary, Briggs Fundamental. She retired in 1985, and after retirement, Dorothy continued to serve the district. She created and presented curriculum on Chino's history for the third and fourth grade students. Dorothy became a very involved in her children's activities. She was a Cub, Cub Scout den leader, Brownies aide, and National Little League volunteer. Dorothy had a passion to serve the community, especially children. Her mission was to keep track and promote Chino's vast history. She gathered oral histories from Chino's pioneers, which had been preserved on tape. Dorothy felt local history was too important to be ignored. The Historical Society and 4-H programs were also causes dear to her heart. For the city of Chino's centennial celebration in 1987, Dorothy researched Chino's founder, Richard Gerd. Dorothy discovered Gerd had a family living in New York, Gerd's great-nephew. She arranged for the family to come to California and attend the city's centennial celebration. Dorothy was one of the three founders of the Chino Valley Historical Society, formed in 1971. Five years later, the Historical Society became the official nonprofit, unofficial nonprofit organization. They acquired the old schoolhouse museum from the Eastside Thimble Club. During this time, she volunteered and was a docket at the Old Schoolhouse Museum and Yorba Slaughter Adobe. She was instrumental in the restoration and seismic retrofitting of the Yorba Adobe Slaughter. She served on the Chino Valley Pioneer Association for 30 years as an ambassador. Dorothy was a key organizer of the annual Pioneer Picnic, coming up soon, by the way. Um, Dorothy served as the president of the Chino Friends of the Library. She was a Reading Specialist Club member for the state of California. She was a member of the Soroptimus Club of Chino. Dorothy loved agriculture and was a member of the Chino Busy Farmers and the largest 4-H club in San Bernardino County and a member of the Women in Agriculture. She served the Los Angeles County Fair as a volunteer board member docket and duty administrator. She was also part of the Los Angeles County Fair Youth in Action Program. She served as a board member for the Chino Fair Association. During her lifetime, Dorothy received recognition for her involvement in many service groups. In 1984, she was a recipient of the Parents Council Service Award. In the same year, she received Chino City's Council Commendation for Service and Support to the students in the 4-H program, Junior Fair, and Chino Museums. In 2000, she was recognized with the Ambassador District Agricultural Association Award. In 2001, she received the Edwin Rhodes Community Service Award, and in 2005, she received the Certificate of Recognition from the State of California for service and support to the Chino Branch Library. Dorothy passed away on July 30th, 2008, in the city of Chino. She will be missed. That's a great woman. Thank you. Uh, my name is Julie, and I'm Dorothy's daughter. And 
My name is Derek, and I'm Dorothy's grandson. This is my wife, Stevie, her grand great-granddaughter, Molly, and great-granddaughter, Darla. I have our son, David. This is my wife, Julie. Uh, and I'm also her grandson, MacArthur. Wonderful. Welcome. I, I would like to just... This, this, yes, and this, this coming Sunday is the Pioneer Picnic at the community building, and we'd like to invite the community to that as well. This, these families will also be honored at the Pioneer Picnic, and we're so pleased to have them with us this evening. Thank you very much for being here with us. She's going to want to get a picture. Thank you once again for being here, and see you Sunday. Next, we have recognition of Chino's Teen Advisory Committee. <clears throat> the Teen Advisory Committee, or TAC for short, is comprised of bright Chino residents who are students in the Chino Valley Unified School District. Tonight, I want to recognize and celebrate this exceptional group of young leaders we have in our community. Since the beginning of the school year, TAC has selflessly dedicated a total of 238 volunteer hours by volunteering at every citywide special event, youth sports game, youth, Chino Youth Museum event, and more. During the year, TAC completed three impactful service projects. They collected warm clothing for seniors in our community, conducted a feminine hygiene drive to support families throughout the Chino Valley Unified School District care closet, and organized a book drive for the Inland Empire Immigrant Youth Collective. These future leaders are a true asset to our community, and their efforts deserve recognition. Tonight, we have certificates of appreciation for each member, and I will also recognize our graduating seniors. To help me with this, I'd like to call up Myra Pratt, Community Services Manager. Myra. If you'd like to read the names, and I'll hand out the certificates. Thank you, Mayor Yulo and Council members for your continued support. So this evening, we are going to recognize some of our TAC members. Unfortunately, there are a group that aren't here because they're studying for their actual exams. They're in, in um, finals weeks. So we're going to start with Gabriela Gandera. She is our chairperson. She's one of our graduating seniors. We have Lizette Luna, our vice chairperson. She's also one of our graduating seniors and unfortunately was unable to make it tonight. We have Hannah Finkbeiner, secretary, graduating senior. We have Manuel Avalos, graduating senior. We have Kendall Baderas. She's unable to make it today. We have Enrico Hernandez. We have Matthew Lee. Is unable to make it. Bridget Moore. Unable to make it. Madeline Ramirez, also graduating senior. Elena Rawson. Bella Zong. So we do want to... Yeah. Luis Malgenanos. We do want to thank our outstanding TAC members. They've given so many efforts into really giving back to our community this year. And many of them standing here are our graduating seniors. And just to highlight 
we have our president who is actually going to be going to Harvard University. We are extremely excited. Our secretary will be going to UCLA, which is an also an excitement. We have another graduating senior who will be going to SAC University. So all their efforts, we really want to acknowledge them tonight, and we wish you all the very best. Thank you. We also look forward to you, after you get out of school, coming back and participating in the city government. That would be fantastic. Thank you again very much. Okay, we, uh, prior to the council meeting, we did have a closed session. I would like to ask our attorney to provide us a report out of that. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council, and all those present. The city council met in closed session, as the mayor announced on the item agendized in the uh, closed session portion of the agenda, but has not concluded those discussions, and will have to reconvene after the open session, so it would be appropriate for me to withhold the report until after uh, the reconvene closed session. Thank okay, you. thank you, Fred. Um, City Manager Wright, do we have any agenda additions or revisions? No changes, Mayor. Okay. In our packet, we have information on our economic development uh, for May 2023. We also have our legislative update. I encourage you to access that information through our website. Find out what's going, in, going on in Sacramento. Next, under public announcements, our Pioneer Picnic. First, make sure you come out to Chino Valley Historical Society's 98th Annual Pioneer Picnic on Sunday, May 21st at the Chino Community Building, located at 5443B Street from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Doors open at 11 a.m. with a potluck available to all participants, so please make sure to bring your favorite entree, side dish, dessert, plates, and utensils. Vintage cars are encouraged and will be on site with the Director for Workmen and Temple Family Homestead Museum, Paul Spitzeriri, serving as our guest speaker. For more information, please contact the Carolyn Owens Community Center at 909-334-3258 or email communityservices at cityofchino.org. Also, please note that City Hall will be closed on May Monday, May 29th, in observance of Memorial Day. City Hall will reopen the following day, Tuesday, May 30th, at its regular operating hours of 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. We encourage everyone to come out to the American Legion Post 299 Memorial Day event on Monday, May 29th, at 10 a.m. at the Community Building, located at 5443B Street. This is a great event that allows all of us to honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice in service to their country. For more information, please call 909-334-3258. And lastly, we sadly will be adjourning in memory of Raul S. Garneca, who passed away on April 26th at 100 years old. Born on September 7th, 1922 in Rocky Ford, Colorado, Raul moved to Chino with his parents and siblings in 1934. Less than a decade later, Raul served his country during World War II as a medic from 1942 to 1945. After serving in World War II, Raul met his wife Ramona in 1946. They had three boys, and Raul went on to have a long career building and installing wells. This included numerous wells on dairies in Chino. Raul will be remembered for his infectious smile and his love of helping others. On behalf of the Chino community, our hearts go out to the Garnica family during this difficult time, and we hope that the Garnica family will take solace in knowing that Raul lived a long and blessed life. 
I think it was his 98th birthday during COVID. He couldn't really get uh, a lot of visitors, and so they had a drive-by birthday celebration. And, oh, my gosh, members of the PD were there, the fire department, and many, many, many people from our community drove by and wished him happy birthday. He was so happy. Mm -hmm. He was so thrilled to see everybody. He was just a great, great man. Next, under public comments, this is the time and the place for the general public to address the council on items that do not appear elsewhere. First, I'll call on those who have written requests to speak. First is Mr. Dennis Hostetler from Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills. He's going to lead us in an invocation, and I invite all those who would like to participate to please stand. Good evening, Mrs. Mayor, City Council members, and all those gathered here today. Would you please all join me in bowing our hearts as we pray? Almighty God, maker of heaven and earth, we thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us as seen in granting the blessings of wisdom, favor, and strength we need to fulfill our duties and our responsibilities among all of our neighbors within our community. And help us, Lord, as you taught us to indeed love all of our neighbors as ourselves. And so we thank you today for the ability to be involved in useful work and the honor of bearing appropriate responsibilities. In the scriptures, you have said that citizens ought to obey the governing authorities because you have established them to promote peace, the rule of law, and justice. Therefore, we pray for our mayor, for the various city officials, and in particular, for this assembled council. We, ask, we are asking that you would grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interests and issues of changing times. We ask that you grant them a sense of the general welfare and the true needs of the heartbeat of our city. We ask for a keen thirst for justice and rightness and confidence in doing what is good and fitting and the ability to work together in unity even amidst honest disagreement. And we ask for personal peace in their lives and purpose in their various tasks. We thank you for um, all of our police officers, our firemen, our first responders, and all those who come to us in aid in our time of need and difficulty. And so, Lord, we pray for the agenda set before them today. Please give an assurance of your work that what they do would benefit all those who live and work around our beloved city of Chino. And we pray all of these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis. Next written request is Melissa Campani from Supervisor Hagman's office. Well, good evening, Mary Lola, council members, staff, and of course, our community members. I do have three exciting events to announce. Um, Supervisor Hagman is going to be very busy this June, so we want to make sure to get the word out. Uh, the first one I believe I, I mentioned here at the last meeting would be uh, the document shredding event, which is being hosted by Supervisor Kurt Hagman in partnership with the city of Chino. It's a great event. It's already shaping up to be very busy. The date is Saturday, June the 3rd from 9 a.m. to noon or until all the shredding trucks reach capacity. This event will be taking place right out here in the parking lot at uh, Chino City Hall. And uh, we do ask that if you get a chance and would like to pre-register at SBC Shredding 060323.eventbrite.com. It should save a little bit of time. It won't nececessarily put you in front of the line, uh, but we try and get everything taken care of in advance. So we look forward to seeing everyone there. That is a free event I wanted to mention. Uh, the next event will be June the 7th, which is a Wednesday from the hours of uh, 5 to 7 p.m. This will be Supervisor Kurt Hagman's open house. We uh, look forward to sharing the event with many county departments and also uh, organizations that do business in our fourth district, such as uh, Omnitrans, uh, Ontario International Airport. They'll all be hosting booths so that if you have any questions and want a chance to talk to some representatives from these organizations, it's a very good opportunity. Now, that will be, uh, like I said, on June the 7th from 5 to 7. If you have any questions, we have a phone number here of 
465-5265 for more information. And the address for Supervisor Hagman's district office is 14010 City Center Drive. That is in the city of Chino Hills. There will be food, so don't forget, and hopefully some ice cream if we can work that out. And the food will be provided by Chino Valley Professional Firefighters. And if you could please RSVP, since we are serving food at supervisorhagman.eventbrite.com. Now for the new one, the one we've all been waiting for. Uh, this is actually an event we have held before, but it is a new location. Uh, Supervisor Hagman is hosting an expungement and job fair. This will be June the 15th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We do ask uh, that you pre-register and the uh, address for that is 6-15jobfair.eventbrite.com. And the location, the new location, will be at the Ontario International Airport, the old airport, um, which is uh, Terminal 1. And we have an address here of 1940 Moore, M-O-O-R-E, Way, in the city of Ontario. However, that actually, the address belongs to something else, but it is that particular building. And I do have a phone number for information. It is 800-451-5627. Uh, we've got lots of big employers who are looking to hire, and uh, so we look forward to making those introductions. And we also will be hosting the Public Defender's Office uh, that will help with record clearing. I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with how that works, uh, but essentially we do have people there to assist. So if you have questions or it's something you've always wanted to know about, um, this is where you can get your answers and, and people will be right there on hand to help. And I think that's about it. Should you have any further questions, I always encourage everyone to follow Supervisor Hagman on Facebook or Insta, as the kids call it. I think it's really Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Insta, that's right. Or you can always sign up to receive his emails and that way you will have advanced notice as to some of these fun and always free events. So we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Next written request to speak is Greg Marquez. Mayor, Mayor, is he speaking on an item or open? Um, it's not on an item. It's just uh, a comment about the commissions. Hello, my name is Greg Marquez. Uh, later on tonight, there will be an agenda item discussing term lengths with the Community Services Commission. I believe with the current movement and the commission and the agenda topic, this would be an appropriate time to bring some recommendations for discussion. Additionally, I'm not even sure if there can be a discussion on public comments. However, each council member received a copy of what I'm going to say. I also understand that we are a general law city, and I'm sure that there are some legal constraints nonetheless. I would like to bring up some policy recommendations on the public record that, got, that I can only hope will spark new discussions regarding both commissions. Item number one, a new discussion on term limits for both commissions. I believe two or three terms is sufficient to give other people in the community a chance to get involved. Item number two, the selection of the community service, the commissioners should include the council member from each district and that the applicant must live in the district that they are representing. I believe since these are appointed positions, the council member in that district should be a part of the process. The current process does not allow for representation throughout the four districts. Item number three, clarification in the current ordinance, how commission members are selected and relieved of duty. There are some vague points in the ordinance regarding commissioner appointments, and I believe every member on council has an equal vote in the process. Item number four, the recommendation is a clarification in the ordinance how an acting member can reapply and process for submitting intent to reapply. I know there may be a standard of operations, but I believe the ordinance hasn't been amended since the 90s. Uh, the fifth recommendation is that the Community Services Commission meetings, actually for both commissions, be televised. Number six, applicants to become a commissioner are advertised in Spanish, Mandarin, and other languages according to the census data. This will ensure members of the community have equal access to the information when a position is available. 
I'm available to meet with city council or city staff to review my comments in detail. I only hope this would at least spark a new discussion. Thank you. Those are the written requests that I have to speak. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. Do any council members wish to have any items pulled for discussion? Okay, seeing none, I would uh, entertain a motion in a second. There's a motion from Councilman Lucio, second from Mayor Pro Tem Comstock. Please vote. And consent calendar passes unanimously. I understand uh, Councilman Flores has a comment he'd like to make. Yeah, just the comment I have is um, on the consent calendar items five and si um, excuse me, uh, items four and five. Um, there's uh, some work that's going to be done over at the senior center, and I'm just excited that um, that's happening over there. Um, some of it is long overdue, but um, some new doors that are being put in that have been uh, severely damaged for a very long time. So again. Um, Kudos to our staff, and um, I'm sure our senior citizens are going to be really pleased with that. So, thank you. You're welcome. Under new business, item number seven, introduction of ordinance number 2023-012, approve an ordinance, uh, approve an introduction of ordinance number 2023-12 to change the Community Services Commission terms from three years to four years. Our staff report this evening will be provided by our attorney, Mr. Fred Galante. Thank you, Mayor, and members of the council, and let, thank you for letting me pinch hit on this. The uh, city council held a workshop on May 9th to analyze the current terms and composition of the Community Services Commission. After evaluating the terms of the Community Service Commissioners relative to Planning Commissioners terms, the council directed staff to bring back an ordinance to make the members terms four years to align with those of planning commissioners. With the proposed change, all currently seated community services commissioners and one vacant seat in process of being filled will complete their uh, current three year terms. All new terms commencing on July 1st, 2023 will be four year terms. Further updates include removal of references to the school board appointee <coughs> position and to update the term dates. The city council also accepted the staff recommendation to um, increase community services commissioner meeting compensation to align with those of planning commissioner compensation of $125 per meeting as well as to change the name of the community services department and those proposed changes will be brought back at a later time. Uh, we've recognized that there are many references in your ordinance that would have to be addressed where community services uh, department is, is referenced so that will uh, come back to this council for consideration. With that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Fred. Yeah, we had discussed um, whether it was appropriate to align to the four years and adjust the compensation as well and agreed that that would probably be the right thing to do. Council comments? Then I would entertain a motion in a second. And if I may just read the ordinance after that. Yes. There is a motion from Councilman Flores, second from Councilman Lucio. Fred? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, before the Council is ordinance number 2023-012, entitled an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Chino, California, amending Chapter 2.38, Chino Community Services Commission of the Chino Municipal Code, and that's being read by title only and waiving further reading. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, and the item did pass unanimously. Item number eight, amendment to construction credit reimbursement agreement for the Pine Avenue improvements. Phase one, stages one through three, and stage four. This item is to approve an amendment to the construction credit reimbursement agreement with Chino Preserve Development Corporation to add $84,050 for additional street improvements to Pine Avenue Street Improvement Phase one, stages one through three, and stage four. Staff report this evening will be provided by Jesus Plasencia, our assistant city engineer. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, Lewis Management Corporation is currently in the process of widening Pine Avenue to provide for three eastbound lanes and two westbound lanes 
from the westerly boundary of town center at the preserve to homecoming drive. These improvements are required as part of the construction of the town center commercial development on the south side of Pine Avenue and are subject to a credit and reimbursement agreement that the city council approved back on June 15, 2021. Uh, city staff recently uh, received complaints from uh, certain local residents in the preserve about the current condition of the roadway pavement at the intersection of Pine Avenue and West Preserve Loop and the, uh, and the associated noise and vibration resulting from vehicles traveling through the intersection at a high rate of speed. This intersection is located just west of the Pine Avenue street improvements that are currently being constructed by Lewis. To help, to help mitigate the issues surrounding the noise and vibration experienced by residents and for efficiency purposes, City staff requested that Lewis expand their pavement rehabilitation work to include the intersection of Pine Avenue and West Preserve Loop, plus additional pavement on West Preserve Loop going about 120 feet north of the intersection. Lewis has agreed to expand their scope of work to address the concern, and consequently, city staff desires to amend the existing credit and reimbursement agreement to include additional pavement rehabilitation. The estimated cost to complete the work is $84,050 which includes 25% for contingencies and soft costs. After the work is completed, city staff will review supporting documentation to verify the total costs eligible for reimbursement. Uh, therefore, city staff recommends the city council approve an amendment to the credit and reimbursement agreement to include additional pavement rehabilitation for a not to exceed amount of $84,050. These funds will be reimbursed through the Road Repair and Accountability Act Fund 327 as part of a corresponding amendment to city project number ST203 to include this additional pavement rehab work. That concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Jesus. Are there any comments or questions? Yeah, I, I have a comment. Uh, I just want to say thank you. Uh, we received some emails from some residents that were complaining about when the trucks hit that intersection and it causes a lot of noise for the residents that live in that area. So I appreciate the fact that you guys moved on this real, really pretty fast. I mean, this is probably the fastest I've seen. I think the email came, I think, last month or a month and a half ago. And you guys have already addressed the issue. So I thank you for that. And I'm sure it's going to make the residents very, very happy. So thank you. Any other comments? I have a question. Jesus, when will we have the third lane westbound? The third lane westbound will in that section will be completed as part of the Fallon Crest uh, development. So that will be completed in the various phases of the, uh, the improvements uh, that occur as part of the, the different uh, projects that you have in, in Fallon Crest. You have, for example, the, the first phase, which is the KB track. Uh, that's east of East Preserve Loop. Then you have the tri-point track, which is uh, west of East Preserve Loop. Uh, the the KB uh, track actually is um, uh, they've they've gotten all of their plans approved, so uh, I believe they're going to be working on their frontage improvements along Pine starting in July. Okay. And then uh, the the tri-point track, I'm not sure at this point. They're not as far along, so I'm. My, my best guess is that it, it may occur uh, later this year or perhaps early next year. That, that would be my best guess. And then further west, that, that's not as far as along. Uh, I don't believe their third phase of the, the Fallon Crest development that we have uh, an actual applicant that's moved forward with uh, entitling that, that portion of the, of the property. So there'll be pieces of it that are improved, but the, the whole length won't be until we get all of the projects approved and constructed probably a couple years, do you think? I believe that's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Well, if there's no other comments or questions, then we need a motion and a second to approve item number eight. Motion from Councilman Flores, second from Councilman Lucio. Item passes unanimously. Item number nine, Professional Services Agreement, Chino Spectrum Traffic Study, MS-232. This is to award a professional services agreement with Iteris, Iteris 
Incorporated Los Angeles, California for engineering design and bid support services for project MS-232 Chino Spectrum Traffic Study. Our staff report this evening will be provided by our city traffic engineer, Dennis Rawls. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Uh, tonight for your consideration is an award of a professional services contract to conduct a Chino Spectrum Traffic Study. As a follow-up to the recent Grand and Pipeline CIP projects, this traffic study will uh, analyze several topics that are all aimed at improving traffic flow around the Chino Spectrum Shopping Center. Uh, some of the tasks included in the traffic study will include new traffic counts, uh, including pedestrian and bicycles, uh, the pedestrian crossings along Grand Avenue at Roswell, Spectrum West, and Spectrum East will be an analyzed to provide direction in determining locations and alignment of crosswalks. Alternative truck routes will be studied to analyze the impacts and poten of potentially removing Grand Avenue as a designated truck route. Preliminary layout designs for location-specific improvements will be prepared to inform uh, potential future traffic improvement projects and a level of service analysis for several intersections along both corridors uh, will be performed uh, for various scenarios uh, I just mentioned. Uh, the traffic signal timing along Grand Avenue and Pipeline Avenues will also be analyzed and updated and implemented as part of this project. As part of that traffic signal timing, staff will work with Caltrans and the City of Chino Hills to coordinate Grand Avenue from Peyton to Pipeline Avenues so that the whole corridor functions seamlessly. The requests for proposals were solicited through Planet Bids and published in the Chino Champion. And on March 10th, 2023, staff received five proposals which were evaluated by staff, rating each pr proposal on the firm's qualifications, related experience, firm profile, uh, personnel staffing plan, project references, understanding of the scope of work, demonstration of the technical abilities, and their potential to complete the project under budget. Based on these criteria, ITERIS Incorporated of Los Angeles, California, was determined to be the best choice. Sufficient funds are included in the current fiscal year CIP budget under project number MS-232. Therefore, staff recommends that the City Council approve a professional services agreement in the amount of $145,005 to ITERIS Incorporated for the traffic engineering design and support services for project number MS-232, Chino Spectrum Traffic Study, and approve a design contingency for up to $4,995 for a total amount not to exceed $150,000. This concludes my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Dennis, how long will this study take? Uh, we anticipate that the study should be completed around September, October of this year. Okay, September, October. Questions or comments from council? Mayor Pro Tem? <coughs> Dennis, I want to thank you for bringing this back to us. I do have some questions. It seems like there's a lot in this study. Some of it that I think is going to be helpful that we could get, but some of it, it just seems like after we did the paving and the improvements to this area, that we're probably asking for things maybe that we wouldn't implement for some time. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to understand is while I I like certain portions of the scope of work. Like I like the idea of us trying to maximize our signaling and moving traffic through there. I also think that um, part of the truck route modification analysis, isn't that also part of our general plan update? So is it a redundant you know, a function of that? As well as if we do pedestrian crossing alternatives now, I mean, when would we really see no, go ahead. I'm, oh. When would we see, um, like, the ability to implement those recommendations at a future project? It, would it be some of the, some of that analysis that, and, and that we would be getting would not be able to be, be implemented because of the design of that road for many years? Would it be better for us to do some of that at a later time when we're really going back to touch those those things? But there's um, there's a lot of good things in this. I'm just asking for some clarification on some of those things. Sure. Um, so for the truck route analysis specifically, uh, while yes, our general plan update is, is moving forward and it includes reviewing uh, the, the truck routes, uh, that wasn't originally incorporated in the scope of work of the general plan. And hopefully part of what this will do is sort of give us sort of a, a, a 
a head start on some of that analysis that can be incorporated into the general plan as it moves forward. So that's part of the reason why that was included uh, into the study at this time, is to really get a jump start on that information and to help uh, supply that information back to the general plan uh, consultant. Uh, because that, that, like I said, that wasn't necessarily a part of the scope of work initially for the general plan. Uh, for review of like say the pedestrian crossings, Yes, if we, if after the study, you know, we discuss and determine that we want to make changes to those, uh, those would have to be future projects. Uh, as well as, uh, uh, along with that, this study also includes not just uh, pedestrian crossings, but improvements to potential um, intersections where trucks are having, uh, are slowing traffic down while they're making turns. Uh, for example, um, northbound 71 at Grand uh, has, uh, a, a single lane that makes a right and then a carpool lane that makes a right. However, trucks can't make the right turn from that right lane, so they use the carpool lane to make a right. The problem we have is that some trucks know that and some trucks don't. So you end up having our two trucks that try to both make that, you know, negotiate that right turn and end up stopping and halting traffic, which is part of the reason we have a backup on Grand. It contributes to that. Likewise, if uh, we look at uh, modifying our truck routes and removing Grand Avenue as a truck route, those trucks will now be rerouted to other locations. And if those locations have impairments, we want to identify those early on so that as we move forward and, and modify truck routes, we can identify projects to make sure that we're you know, widening uh, radiuses of corners to allow those truck movements to occur uh, much easier. Um, locations might be like um, uh, Edison and Ramona, for example, um, an eastbound right turn movement. Um, uh, because if we are removing Grand Avenue as a truck route, a lot of industrial right there on the east side of pipeline will have to be rerouted. Uh, so they, they'll, they'll have a, a route towards Riverside north of Ramona, or they'll have to use Ramona south of the 71 as an alternative uh, if they're accessing the 71. So, uh, there's, so there's, that was why a lot of the scope of work was framed the way it was, and it was kind of why we were, we're here now instead of not doing this before, because uh, things kept coming up that we're like, oh, we should probably add that to that. We should probably add that to that. Thank you for the explanation, Dennis. I, I, th I think this started with you know, a lot of our discussions on the, the paving project several months ago as far as you know, pedestrians and, and bicyclists in this area. It's, it's a difficult area to get in, in and out of that way. I just think now it's expanded to other things that are going to be helpful to us, but I think there's a couple things in there that we were, we're going to study that I don't think we may even touch for you know, really long periods of time. I'm just wondering if it's worth it to, for us to keep some of those scopes in the, in the project if we're not really going to come back and touch that project for another 10, 15 years you know, to make those modifications. Because by the time we do that, we'll probably do a, need another study to make sure that it's all still being recommended and accurate. Because you know, a, a lot, I think, is going to change you know, in that area over, over the next, next period of time. That's, those are my comments, and I, I, I welcome just any other council member's perspective on it. You know, listening to what you said, Dennis, it makes sense, though, Karen, if, if in looking at this, it leads to eventual improvements to other areas that would accommodate trucks, then if those other areas are under study for some kind of modification, then they can incorporate what this study comes up with. Do you see what I mean? Instead of having to redo another corner again. Um, so I think it's all building blocks to where we want to go eventually. And I'm sure our staff isn't going to bring back a project that's going to have to get done two or three times. Yeah, I, I agree with you there, Mayor. Like the, the signals and the trucks, we've already had some very significant truck route collisions down there, even with trucks tipping over and different things. I just think there may be a couple, a couple things that we've also added to this that we're, even when we analyze it, I don't, I'm, I'm concerned that we're going to study it now. And if the implementation isn't for 10 or 15 years at a future project, that is going to be obsolete. Yeah, could, could be. Kurt? Dennis, I want to understand that the, are we going to have the study done, you said, it in September, October of this year? Correct. Is that correct? Yeah. And I heard you say if about the truck route. Did, did we, didn't we decide that that would no longer be a truck route between 71 and Pipeline along Grand Avenue? Well, I'd, technically, I'd, there hasn't been a decision yet. Part of what this study is uh, meant to do is to help inform the city council on if we were to change that route, what might some of the impacts be? Uh, so it, it's, this study is purposely uh, uh, meant to help 
give guidance and, and inform the city council before they make that final decision. Okay, I thought we we fin I thought we finalized that. Uh, we we didn't finalize it. We said we wanted to study it. Okay, so the study should come back by October, correct? Yes, once it's complete, I'll, I'll bring back the results. a recommendation that that will no longer be a truck route, correct? Yes. Okay. But if, but but if, it, it, takes, if it takes modifications to other streets in order to safely Thank get you. the trucks off of ground, right. then we have to look at getting that accomplished before we change the truck route. So I think, I, if I can help, so I think anyone who's driven out there sees there's a ton of trucks. Uh, and, and certainly removing Grand Avenue as a truck route is no simple task. Uh, and if we were successful in doing that, those trucks all have to now be rerouted somewhere else. And so those impacts on those other streets, that's what this traffic study will help us understand, is uh, by making this decision, uh, what are, what it, what are go what's going to happen to our roadways in terms of traffic volume and increased delay uh, and level of service at these little locations now that Grand Avenue is no longer a truck route. So that's part of the information this, this study is hoping to uh, provide. And we just redid that street in that area, as you know. And by the time we get around to doing this, it's, I can imagine what the street's gonna look like at that point in time. But did, it, did we upgrade that area? We, we talked about upgrading the asphalt maybe to concrete. Did we do that in that we, section? We did in the westbound number three and number four lane at Roswell. Uh, so yes, there was about, uh, I wanna say about 250 feet of concrete uh, in those two lanes. Uh, and part of this traffic study is to retime those signals. One of the things I'm hoping to accomplish is reduce the amount of stopping that occurs, especially in the westbound direction as trucks are getting onto the freeway um, during peak periods. So uh, part of uh, this whole thing is really to, to help maintain the quality, of, the quality of that pavement that we just put down. I'm really excited to get this going uh, without, without any kind of delay. So whatever we can do to assist that happening, let us know, uh, because this, this, this needs to happen ASAP. Dennis, I'm curious <clears throat> about any unintended consequences. Like, for instance, if Grand Avenue is removed, will this study determine if trucks traveling west on 60 who normally would go to 71 and get off at Grand, if they can't get off at Grand, would they get off the 60 at Ramona and then impact Ramona all the way down, which is a very narrow street? That is exactly one of the things that this study will take a look at. And, and uh, in the scope of work, it actually looks at uh, using big data to help ascertain how trucks are currently traveling and if we remove, uh, if Grand is removed as a truck route um, and those trucks go somewhere else. Uh, looking at uh, those corridors, the impacts of those corridors, um, and the intersection improvements that might be necessary to help, a, uh, uh, help alleviate some of those impacts. Because impacting the north part of Ra Ramona Avenue south of 60 Freeway would be a disaster. I mean, that's a two-lane road, neighborhood, schools, and there's no way you're ever going to widen Ramona Avenue. So you're talking about Ramona near the 60? Yes. Okay, so that's not a truck route. Ramona just connects to Riverside. But so. it doesn't mean that they won't use it. For sure. Because they use Chino Avenue and they're not supposed to. Yeah. So I'm just kind of wondering if you're looking at those kinds of possible unintended consequences. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, then we need a motion in a second. Motion from Councilman Burton, second from Councilman Flores, and the item passes unanimously. Authorization, uh, authorize a vendor purchase order for police vehicles. This is to approve a purchase order to Brannon Motors uh, in Georgia in the amount of $561,890.25 for the purchase of 10 model year 2023 Ford Explorer Utility Interceptors and one model year 2023 Ford F-150 Police Responder Truck for the Police Department. Staff report this evening will be provided by our Assistant Public Works Services Manager, Keith Martinez. 
Good evening, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. The City of Chino Public Works Department Fleet Division is responsible for purchasing, maintaining, repairing, and replacing all city-owned vehicles. The life cycle of each city vehicle is tracked in a fleet management system that evaluates the mileage, age, type of service, maintenance repair history, depreciation cost, and overall condition of each vehicle. Staff has identified eight vehicles assigned to the city police department that are beyond their life cycle and in need of replacement. Due to the police department growth, an additional three new vehicles were requested for a total of 11 new emergency vehicles to the fleet. Over the past 18 months, staff has published on five separate occasions bid packages for various subsets of emergency vehicles through planet bids or sought to piggyback on existing requests for proposals issued under cooperative purchase agreements such as NJPA or also known as Sourcewell. Unfortunately, in each of these five instances, vendors with approved purchase orders were subsequently notified by the primary vehicle manufacturers such as Ford and General Motors that the requested police vehicles were unavailable as production lines had been halted due to supply chain constraints, thus preventing the order to be filled. Due to these constraints, staff was compelled to look outside of California for other options and identified a dealership, Brandon Motor Companies, and Unidela Georgia that currently has all 11 of these vehicles in stock with unit pricing that is consistent with California pricing reserved earlier in this year. At this time, staff recommends that the City Council waive the formal bidding requirements in accordance with Municipal Code 3.32.070, subsection D, and approve a purchase order to Brandon Motor, Motor Company, Unadilla, Georgia, in the amount of $503,100, plus sales tax and fees of $58,790.25, for a total amount not to exceed $561,890.25. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions the council may have. Keith, don't California cars require different emission systems than in Georgia? Correct, but as of late, a lot of the states are moving to California emission requirements, so it is safe to say that all of the ones that we're purchasing in, Ch in Georgia have the California emissions required. You know that for a fact? I was confirmed by the dealership, and we also have three other agencies in California that have purchased from this dealership as well. What a shame that we have to go to Georgia and we can't just stay and, and make the purchase in town with one of our own car dealers. Unfortunate. Comments, questions? Yes. Kurt? Will the taxes, Keith, will the taxes be any different? Uh, by purchasing them out in Georgia and bringing them back here? Is it, is it a lower rate out there? I, I, I don't know. No, because it's delivered in California, we still pay the 7.75% taxes, and it's already included in the 561 that we're requesting. Great. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. You're welcome. When, when will these vehicles be delivered? Well, to uh, the surprise of the chief and the police that are in, in the audience, uh, we should have them hopefully by some time in June. Oh, really? And then they have to go to our vendor to get all the markings and special equipment? That's correct. So when will they actually go in service? Uh, based on what 10 8 schedule is, which is the vendor that we use to do the work, we're probably looking at possibly July, maybe as early as August, depending on their schedule. Okay. And one last question. I know um, we used to have a mi set mileage for retiring the police cars. What is our current mileage that we try to get to before they're retired? I believe it's 90,000. Don't 90, quote me on that, but I think it's 90,000. Yeah. And those are tough miles. Right. Tough 90,000. Let me, let me reiterate that. Tough 90,000. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's cheap. Well, Can we send a motor unit out to Georgia to escort the car carriers <laughs> to get them here any quicker? Oh my gosh. We have a, a whole fleet of, of personnel who are willing uh, and <laughs> included to drive and get these cars and bring them back. Oh. In, in, regard, in regards to the mileage uh, and what, what Public Works has done is we, we actually have a formula based not just on mileage but based on how many times it's had to go in for service and other functions and so that tells us when these cars need to be, uh, need to be rotated out but they should not exceed 90,000. Well, I, I recall many years ago, um, I'm not going to name people or anything, but there was a, a complaint by a troubled person in the old downtown area that told me one day, laughed, and said, you think 
that your unmarked police cars are really stealth, we hear them coming. We know when they're coming because they squeak and rattle. I thought, oh, for the love of God. <laughs> Th those days are over. We have these unmarked cars, but everybody hears them coming. So it's like, oh, here comes the stealth car. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have that anymore. Um, back to the tax question. Uh, since Chino is the specific delivery point, um, and maybe I'll have to work with your finance director, but Chino should be designated as the point of sale. It would because be nice if it is, because yeah. then at least we get some benefit from that. Yeah, so we may have to actually work with the dealer to make sure that happens. Yeah, good idea, good idea. Okay, with that, I would entertain a motion in a second. Motion from Mayor Pro Tem Comstock, second from Councilman Flores. And the item passes unanimously. So, Chief, you should have new cars in a few months. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda is Mayor and Council reports. I have item number 11, excuse me, which is Community Support Fund. Uh, various amounts of money for organizations that help our community. I have them listed. One correction um, in the staff report is it's Monta Vista 4H, not just Monta Vista because many of our kids belong to Monta Vista 4-H, so that amount of money helps them. Um, I'm not gonna read all of the organizations that I'm asking money to be donated to, it's within our staff report. So with that, I would request a motion and a second approving item number 11. Motion from Councilman Burton, second by Mayor Pro Tem Comstock, and that item passes unanimously. Uh, for the rest of my report, <clears throat> On uh, Wednesday, May 3rd, I attended Omnitrans and SPCTA Board of Directors. On the 4th, uh, Chino DeSalter Authority Board of Directors and Inland Empire Utility uh, Sewage Policy Committee. On Friday the 5th, I attended the senior birthdays. On uh, Tuesday the 9th, I met with city manager and then attended our workshop later that day. On the 10th, Wednesday the 10th, attended the prayer breakfast, and then that evening we had the State of the City, which I think turned out phenomenal. It was very well attended. We had a completely different format than we've ever done before. So I want to thank staff and all their hard work in putting that together, and Group 1 for the video that was put together, and Ariana, all of her hard work, and, and the rest of the team, um, absolutely incredible. A lot of work went into it, and I think everybody that attended really enjoyed it. Um, on the 11th, I attended uh, San Bernardino County Transportation Authority Metro Valley Committee and the Transit Committee. Uh, and then that evening, along with Councilman uh, Burton and uh, uh, Warren Morleone, we attended the American Planning Association Awards um, ceremony that was held at the Cheech in Riverside, I'd never been there before. That was a fascinating museum. And what we uh, received was the award for our Civic Center Master Plan that was put together with our consultant, uh, Gruen and Associates, and Associates, and a whole lot of work from our community director, or development director, Mr. Nick Ligori. Nick, I wanna thank you and your team for I don't know how many hours it took to put that together, but um, to be awarded special recognition from that's pretty special. So thank you very much. And then uh, on the 15th, today, we had our budget workshop. Or yeah, that was yesterday. Boy, the days just all meld together. A budget workshop, which was very informative. Um, we've asked for additional information to be brought back. And what we're doing differently this year is we're having a two-year budget instead of a one-year budget that we're looking at. And we're looking at projecting out at least 10 years. Um, with the crazy economic times that we're going through right now, I think it's very, very important for us to look into the future uh, to see our financial health and what we're going to need as we move forward. Um, our citizens demand excellent services and they deserve excellent services and that takes money. So we're trying to project out what we need to keep our community whole, <clears throat> keep quality of life and be completely transparent. And it's uh, Rob and, and the financial team, it's putting an awful lot of pressure and a lot of work on them. But 
and all of our staff, in fact. But I think it's going to be well worth it. So with that, that's my item. And then uh, Mayor Pro Tem Comstock, you have item number 12. Thank you, Mayor. I have the same request to approve these community support funds to these uh, um, um, nonprofit um, operations in the city of Chino. There's a list of them as well that I won't go through. It's in my staff report. But I can uh, um, want to assure the council and the community that they all do good work in our community. And I'm asking for the council support to this motion. So. Okay, there's a motion from Councilman. Well, it disappeared. Lucio, and who was the second? You. Oh, and I was the, well, it disappeared. And I was the second, and the item passed unanimously. Go ahead with your report. Thank you, Mayor. On Wednesday, May 3rd, I met with a local business operator and developer by the name of David Frewing to discuss mutual business items of city interest. Uh, actually, David um, and his family received a, um, an award from you, Mayor, for some of his work in the city, and I think the Frewing family is a, a good community partner. Um, as well as they own the, the, the company U.S. Bowling, and they were instrumental in helping us um, construct the Russ Miller Memorial there. Mm -hmm. They're just a great family. Um, in fact, his dad was in town. I got to see him that day, too, which is Daryl Frewing. On Tuesday, May 9th, I attended a workshop presented by our staff here in the city council chambers regarding the management of our unsheltered population and the comprehensive list of services that we provide with the goal of helping these people attain long-term, affordable, and sustainable housing. It's not just our own services and our own case managers, but also we work in collaboration with so many different entities, so many different food banks, um, the county. So um, there is help out there if people want it. And we've actually are also successful in helping people get off the street and, 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 and find places to live for the long term. So I'm grateful to our staff and all the nonprofits that we work for to help with that. And managing that, that um, that that issue for us is paramount to maintaining good quality life for our residents here in Chino. This workshop also stated our current stock and supply of parkland in the city, the Community Services Commission rebranding and mission statement, and the realigning of the compensation and the terms for our Community Service Commissioners to match our Planning Commissioners, which we discussed earlier today. On May 10th, I attended the Mayor's State of the City Address hosted at the Chafee College uh, Community Center here in Chino. It was a, a great event, Mayor, great job. It was well attended to our staff who worked to make that a success. It was a nice event to the everybody. I mean, all, the, all the attention, the detail, the flowers, the, the gifts that um, were presented. Of course, we honored um, uh, uh, Glenn Duncan with the Spirit of Achievement Award that night. So congratulations to Glenn and Cindy. That was well deserved. And uh, thank you to the Chino Fire Department and the Chino Police Department for the for the, um, the, 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 the uh, color guard that presented the colors. On May 13th, I attended the general plan update community meeting at the Preserve Community Center. I want to say there again that our staff did a great job down there. I've been going to a lot of meetings as part of um, my assignment to the city council in the Preserve, and I want our staff to know that it was a notably different feel in the Preserve Community Center that day. We had over 100 people RSVP for that event. We met a lot of our newest residents that have moved into Chino, and our staff did a great job about discussing how important the general plan update is and what that means and how to uh, further construct that community as we move forward. I also want to thank the uh, Chino PD and their barbecue trailer for providing food for people there that day. So thank you very much, guys. That's why you had a The burgers people. were good, by the way. So I didn't have a hot dog, but, you know, the burgers were good. On May 15th, I attended the budget workshop along with a robust gathering of our staff here in the council chambers. Mayor, as you mentioned, this is uh, our attempt at a, a first, our first attempt at a two-year budget, and we are attempting to decide on several very key and important issues, including how much money should we maintain in our general fund reserves, you know, making sure that we're starting to use some of our general fund money to, to fund deferred maintenance and capital improvement projects in the city without threatening our, our general fund balance should we run into, you know, it, if should be, but when we run into a recession, because we all know that, you know, economic cycles come and go. Um, and as the mayor previously stated, to explain to our community moving forward into the future, really the financial cost that it takes for us to operate the city in the, in the areas of capital improvement projects, trying to catch up on our, our deferred maintenance to roads and different things, and also, um, 
to properly maintain our, our public streets. Um, one of the things that we learned uh, in this process through our roadway paving management system is that we should be spending about $11.8 million annually in order to properly maintain our streets to, their, to, their, to a suitable level, and we're falling short of that. So we'll have a more discussion about that with, with our staff and our, and our public in the future. Today, along with Council Member Lucio, I attended a meeting with several uh, of our staff members that they are working on regarding vehicle storage and local advertising. So that was a good meeting. And prior to tonight's meeting, I also attended the closed session with the rest of the council. I want to congratulate uh, Mayor, um, the Cattle family and the Greer family. Actually, uh, Mrs. Greer was uh, one of the principals at Dixon when I was there. She was a, a great lady. I remember her vividly as a student at Dixon. So congratulations to their families. And thank you to the Historical Society for your work that you do there to honor those members of our community. Um, the comments earlier regarding our planning and community services commission and selection appointments. Um, Linda, I know that this has been brought up before. Are we working on updating that ordinance or looking at it and bringing it back to potentially a workshop for the council or where are we at with, with that? Um, so we're looking at the ordinance to update the name for the community services department, the new name. Um, as far as anything else, we haven't been given direction to do that. Okay. I think m maybe it's worthy if the rest of the council agrees with looking at um, the ordinance, the selections, a lot, a lot of things have changed since 1990. I think some of the comments that were brought up tonight were actually interesting, and maybe it's worthy of us looking at together as, as a council you know, moving forward. We've made some, we've made some, recently made some dis um, changes to different committee assignments and how we do things. Maybe it's worthy of us looking at that process as well as we move forward. Just my, my recommendation there. Um, my sympathy to the members of the Riverside Sheriff's Office for the loss of Deputy Harris and the traffic collision. The sh Sheriff's Office has had it tough lately, and um, this is certainly you know, another loss. Also, my sympathy to the members of the Chino Police Department. We lost uh, Karen Thomas this weekend after a reoccurrence of, of cancer. Uh, Karen's one of the first people I worked with over here at the old PD building when I was hired as a police cadet back in 1987. Her husband, Chet, is also a retired police officer, and they were long-term Chino residents prior to retiring and moving out of the community, so my sympathy to Karen and her family. Uh, this is National Police Week, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to pay my respect for the surviving family members of law enforcement across the state of California and just nationally um, for all the personnel who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, and <clears throat> may we never forget any of them and their service to our communities. And that concludes my report, Mayor, tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Burton. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. On Thursday the 4th, I attended the National Day of Prayer with the Mayor and Councilman Flores on the lawn in front of City Hall. Uh, the event was very well attended despite the pouring down rain that day, and it was really coming down out there. Uh, later, I attended a budget overview meeting with the city staff and then attended a housing committee meeting with Councilman Flores and city staff. Later on that evening, to wrap it up, I attended the Chino Valley Unified School Board meeting. On Tuesday the 9th, I attended a water meeting with city staff members Dave Crosley and Natalie uh, Avila. I want to thank them again for their patience in trying to bring me up to speed and educate me as to our water here in the Chino Valley, uh, the Chino Water Basin and how it all works. and what water rights are all about, but I, I just definitely appreciate the, the help that they're, they're giving me that will continue. Um, also, I attended a city council workshop with the mayor and council members on that day, uh, discussed the homeless services as well as current and future parkland in the city. We also discussed the proposed name change of community services, term links, and the compensation of the community services commission on the 10th. I attended the Mayor's State of the City Address at the Chafee College Community Center with my lovely wife, Bertie, and a uh, guest, uh, George Sasso, who's a associate pastor at Calvary Chapel at Chino Valley. The mayor discussed uh, quite eloquently the city's accomplishments and the city council priorities for the upcoming year. Uh, it was very, very well attended. And I also wanted to congratulate the Glenn Duncan on uh, receiving the Spirit of Achievement Award. On the 11th, I attended the American Planning Association Award Ceremony with Mary Uloa, Deputy City Manager Vivian Castro and City Planner Warren Morleone, 
at the Cheech Center in Riverside. Uh, as the mayor uh, had discussed, it was an excellent award in urban design. And this award honors projects that take a visionary approach to address identified needs and, and integrate and support the overall planning goals of the city. So Nick, uh, I also want to echo uh, what the mayor had mentioned. Congratulations on that. You guys did a great job on it. Thank you. On the 12th, I attend the Corporate Challenge Casino Night and the closing ceremonies at the Community Building. And I'm very proud to announce that the City of Chino came in first place this year in Corporate Challenge. And congratulations to all the city employees that participated in that. It was great fun. On the 13th, I attended the General Plan Alternative Open House that was held down at the Preserve Community Center with Mayor Pro Tem Comstock and Council Member Lucio. This was a great opportunity for our residents to provide input on how they would like to see the city shaped in the future. <coughs> I'd also like to thank the Police Officers Association for the burgers and the hot dogs. Those are always nice. On the 15th, my one-on-one -on -one with the city manager and I also attended the budget workshop with the council and city staff. And I'd just like to close uh, uh, in wishing my condolences also to Karen, Karen the death of Karen Thomas. Uh, she was also working at the police department back in 1986 when I started there. She worked in the records division and she was uh, an outstanding employee and, and she's gonna be missed. And that's, that's all I have, Mayor. Councilman Flores. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, May 4th, I attended the National Day of Prayer. And um, again, as was mentioned earlier, it was raining that day, but um, we had a, um, an attendance that's uh, just growing and growing, and um, I'm, I, I, I love seeing that. That same day, I attended the Housing Committee meeting um, with um, Council Member Bert, uh, Kurt, excuse me. May 5th, I attended the Andes Express Wash Grand Reopening. Um, it was a great turnout down there. Again, um, that same day, it was raining, um, so it was kind of ironic. Um, it was raining while we had a uh, Andes Express uh, wash grand reopening. On May 6th, I attended the uh, corporate challenge, um, or I participated in corporate challenges. Um, I played on the softball team with um, some members of our staff, and uh, just don't ask me how we did. Um, I'm glad we won first place, or else I would have felt really guilty. <laughs> on May 9th, I attended the uh, workshop with the rest of the council regarding our homeless population and parkland. On the 10th, I attended the State of the City Address. On the 12th, I attended the Corporate Challenge Closing Ceremonies. On the 15th, yesterday, I attended the Budget Workshop. And I do want to extend my um, sincere apologies to the uh, Chino Youth Museum. Um, I was uh, scheduled to be at the uh, Bingo Bash, and um, the workshop went longer than um, it should have, so I wasn't able to make it. Uh, Brenda Strong, I'm sorry. Um, but with that being said, Mayor, that concludes my um, report. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lucio. <clears throat> yes, on, uh, on May 3rd, I attended the budget overview uh, meeting with the city manager and, uh, and the finance department. Uh, later on that day, I, I also uh, met with uh, the family from U.S. Bowling um, who gave us a, a tour of their facility there and uh, kind of showed us everything. I, I wasn't aware, but they do everything for bowling except for the pins and the balls, but they actually do the scoreboards and flooring, everything, and rails. So it was, it was pretty impressive, um, their operation that they have. They said they're the largest family-owned uh, bowling manufacturer. Other than that, they have the big, the two big companies, which is the IMF or Brunswick, uh, but they're the, they're the biggest uh, family-owned company. On May 4th through May 5th, I attended the SCAG Regional uh, Conference over in Palm Springs with uh, uh, Assistant City Manager Jackie Melendez, and I will say that uh, that was the first time I attended a conference where I saw somebody work the room like she did. She's got a lot of connections, so I, I look forward to, to what she can do for the city because she, she truly does know everybody and, and, was, uh, and everybody seemed to have a lot of, uh, a lot of respect for her and, and everybody spoke very highly of her. So I appreciate the fact that she's here now with us here at the city and hopefully help us to develop and bring some, some businesses here. On May 9th, I attended the city council workshop uh, with everybody else. On the 10th, it was the mayor's state of the city. That I attended that. It was a great turnout. I think it was better to have it during uh, the evening hours as opposed to during the day. I think there was a lot more people that showed up. On um, May 13th, I attended the, the general plan alternative uh, community meeting over in the preserve. And I, I will echo what, what, 
the other two that that attended said the attitudes there have, are completely different than they were when we first were attending meetings down there when they were just always angry they they didn't feel like they were being included in anything and I think us continuously going out there and meeting with them is really changing the perspective of, of the way they feel about the city. Now, we're not going to change everybody. There's always going to be your people that no matter what you do for them, they're always going to be angry. They're always going to be upset. But I think the majority of the folks down there like the fact that they're seeing a shopping center going in. They like to see that there's a second school going in. They like to see that the roads are being completed. So I think we're doing uh, some good things down there, and I think... Um, the, the, you could just tell by the by the way the folks were, it, it was just a lot more positive than uh, what we're used to normally. When I first started going down, there was really, really negative, but now everything seems to change. On the 15th, I attended a meeting with the city manager, my weekly meeting, and on the 15th, later on that day, I did the, we attended the budget workshop. And today we had a, a truck van storage meeting, and uh, I also want to... Uh, Put my condolences out to everybody for police officers memorial week I, i've got a couple good friends that were lost in line of duty that were put on the wall uh, there in washington dc and also in california and i will say if you're a police officer um, you should make it a, a point to go up to washington dc at least once during police week because it really brings home um, what the ultimate sacrifice is and, and how much the community appreciates it, and, and all of law enforcement, not just from the United States, from, but throughout the world, comes and celebrates that and recognizes it. And, and basically, Washington, D.C. shuts down, and it, it's, there, there's numerous things that, that are put on for law enforcement. If you have a family, I would suggest taking them to that. I mean, they, they really get a great perspective of what being a law enforcement officer is and, and what uh, the ultimate sacrifice and how, how much it's truly appreciated by the community, not just law enforcement, but the community, the United States, and, 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 and Washington, D.C. itself is just a phenomenal city. I mean, everything seems to be alive, and everybody's rowing, running, you name it, and the monuments that are outstanding. So I know that some, uh, some cities used to pay for a couple officers, you know, and I don't know if, if it would be worthy of looking at, you know, whoever wins officer of the year or what have you, that maybe we we send them to Washington, D.C. to represent the department, but it, it should be something that we should look forward to, something that we should we should honor uh, by sending some of our members of our police department up there to at least represent the Chino Police Department every year. Uh, but I'll close with that, and I look forward to the car show for the fire department this weekend. Yeah. City Manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. I do have a couple things. So I know you mentioned corporate challenge, Council Member Burton. That was a... Two weeks, we ended last Friday. We have not won Corporate Challenge since 2018, so it's been five years. We did have a year off, but I wanna thank our team that put that together, our coordinators. It was Lisa, Nikki, Andy, Hector, and Claudia. They worked for a long time to assemble our team, make sure we had our waivers in place, make sure we had participants at each event. So it was really a fa fantastic event. It's so great to get to mix and mingle with other businesses in town and get to know them and also our partners in Chino Hills, and it's always great to come in ahead of them. <laughs> so we appreciate that. And we haven't done that a for long much longer than five years. So we're really happy about that. I wanna thank our team for the, the state of the city and thank the mayor and the council members. Uh, the video was fantastic. Our team worked really hard on that for months and months to make it a really good event. And because it was different, there were a lot of changes and our team stepped up to the plate and they did that like they always do. The, um, uh, the APA award, that was a lot of work by our team. I know I've mentioned it before. It was two and a half years working on that project. And it was, you know, uh, Nick uh, Liguori, Vivian Castro, Carolyn Baltzer, and myself who sat on that committee for that time. We had our, our technical advisory committee, which I believe was the mayor and council member Lucio. And there was a lot of input that went into that. It was a long time coming and the Gruen and Associates are fantastic to work for. They are a, a pretty known name in the planning world. So we were fortunate to have them on our team. And then finally, I'd just like to, two more things. Um, I'd like to thank Nick Liguori for his time here in the city. He's in the back. Um, he's moving on. And uh, he has been with us for 20 years plus. And a lot of what our community looked like has a lot to do with him. 
So we want to thank him for that. Wish him well. And then finally, I'd just like to get some clarification. Would you like us to set up a, a workshop to talk about commissions? Is there a consensus on that with the council? And I don't know if there's consensus throughout. I think first, um, I think query the council to find out what our concerns are, see okay. what's worthy of discussion. That sounds perfect. Okay. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. City Attorney. I just want to report to the council that I continue to be engaged in the sewerage service agreement extension with uh, IEUA. Um, today, uh, your city manager and I attended one of several meetings that we have had. Um, although we overall are making progress, I was hoping to have some analysis and uh, summary for the council by now. but when there are several contracting agencies and another party on the other side, as you could imagine, um, it is hard to corral everybody's opinion into uh, an agreement. So we continue to work towards that. Today we had a very productive meeting and I hope to be able to provide the council any uh, a summary of all that once we have some clear definition. But in the meantime, if anyone has questions about that, I'm happy to respond. When does the actual contract expire? Uh, that's a very good question. It did expire already. Um, you may recall uh, there was a tolling agreement that we were asked to participate in because yes. the opinion of the contracting agencies was that the contract term should have continued in exactly the same way as written in the uh, existing contract that expired. Right. Um, there was disagreement on that, so we reserved the right to fight about it and uh, to avoid having to be pressured to file any legal action. That's what the tolling agreement, uh, the purpose of the tolling agreement. And then so they adopted an ordinance, right? They adopted two ordinances to two. essentially replace the terms of the agreement. Um, and the presence of those ordinances, as you could imagine, create additional issues for us to address. So there are various issues, but your staff, including Dave Crosby, and uh, your city manager have been tremendously helpful. Well, this is very, very important to our future. And so um, I'd, I'd like to step out in front and say you've got the full council support to do whatever it takes to keep us whole and safe. Our water rights are critical. Our storage is critical. And uh, so is the our ownership of recycled water. And so I would say it's worth the fight. That is essentially the one issue that is probably the become the most difficult because of the importance of recycled water and its importance in the future years. Um, the, the and I won't go on too long, but the uh, the great investment that Chino made and I'll credit Ontario also is to put in infrastructure to take advantage of that system, and so that's why. These rights are very important. With as Linda and I discuss them, we sort of dig our heels on the, on those issues. Well, similar to where we're moving forward with our budget, looking out ten years to figure out what we need to to not only keep our community whole but improve the quality of life. The contract with IEUA and the recycled water is critical. So, keep up the good fight. Thank you, um, Chief Simmons. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council, and I appreciate you guys acknowledging uh, National Police Week. Just wanted to share with, with our community that National Police Week was initially designated by President Kennedy in 1962, and uh, since that time, the memorial was actually finished in 1991, and since that time, over 23,000 uh, law enforcement names have been inscribed on that memorial, including uh, our own Chino Constable Fred Bristol, who was killed in the line of duty on May 5, 1904. Chino Night Watchman Charles Keller, who was killed in the line of duty on August 13, 1916. And Chino Police Officer Russ Miller, who was killed in the line of duty on February 1, 2000. Um, and, and in response to, to your comment, Councilmember Lucio, we do send um, two members right now uh, to the state memorial every year to represent us and our officer of the year and our professional staff member are afforded the opportunity to attend the national memorial every year 
and we do that in combination with our police associations who help cover some of the costs for that. In addition to that, we, we often have members of our agency participate in the police unity tour, which is a 300 mile bike ride during National Police Week. We partner with the Southern California chapter, which can, contains about 300, 300 riders. All together nationwide, there's about 5,000 riders who all converge on Washington, D.C. And this year, Sergeant Jesus Jaquez rode, uh, rode in the unity tour to represent us. Um, and uh, he rode from New Jersey to D.C. And, and I just want to read a quote that, that he shared on why he did it. He says, I'm riding for my close friend and brother in arms, Sergeant Christopher Brax. Chris and I served in the Marine Corps and deployed to Kosovo and Iraq together. He later joined Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, where he was promoted to sergeant. And uh, Chris, Chris had passed away the year prior doing, during the unity tour. Oh. And so uh, Sergeant, Sergeant Jaquez rode for him. And in addition to the state and the national memorial, we also participate every year in the county memorial, which is this Thursday at 9 o'clock. It's all the county agencies. And we, uh, we honor all the, all the members uh, from San Bernardino County who have died in the line of duty. And that will be at the Ontario Town Square at 224 North Euclid Avenue at 9 o'clock on Thursday. And that's open to the public as well. That's all I have to share unless you have any uh, questions for me. Any questions of the chief? Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I don't know how much you can share about this, but, but I was so impressed yesterday coming home from the workshop. Um, you know, we hear a lot about our license plate readers. Uh, traveling home, going northbound on Central, Central Avenue north of the freeway was lit up like Christmas. And I thought, what in the world is going on? Well. Abs absolutely, Mayor. Um, what, what happened uh, yesterday is a stolen vehicle from Riverside County drove through one of our license plate readers. It alerted our officers. They were able to locate that vehicle and, and, um, and confirm that it was, in fact, stolen. And they conducted a high-risk traffic stop on that vehicle at Central and Philadelphia. And were able to take the, uh, the driver and the two passengers into, into custody. The driver uh, of that vehicle uh, was already on probation uh, for possession of stolen property and, of course, now in possession of more stolen property meaning somebody's vehicle. So yes, that technology has been extremely beneficial to us catching criminals. And I would, I would theorize that they had come to our community to victimize our community because they did not live here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're grateful for the council's support and uh, help with, with that. Well, it was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. I Thank mean, you. they had the street blocked down and the red and blue and white lights are, were going like crazy and people, traffic was being rerouted. Um, so it was uh, pretty impressive. So again, you know, criminals stay out of Chino. Absolutely. You're going to get caught. Just, I mean, for somebody to be dumb enough, I guess, to drive through our community in a stolen car, I mean, they obviously don't know Chino, do they? They do Thank not. Goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you very much. Jeremy, you're here for the, police, the fire district. Almost said police. <laughs> yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Jeremy Alton, one of the Deputy Chiefs. Proud to serve in that capacity for the Fire District. On behalf of Chief Williams and our entire board, first I'd like to start with sending their, their uh, appreciation and uh, well wishes. They're actually all in Sacramento currently meeting with our state legislators and representing the interests of the district and our community up there. Um, also, uh, regarding the state of the city, unfortunately, I was not able to personally attend uh, it happened to coincide with one of our board meetings that night. So uh, unfortunately, I wasn't be able to be there, but uh, we did split the team mm -hmm. and we were thankful that we were able to attend. Uh, thank you so much for uh, um, your partnership and also the accolades uh, that were given to the district um, by the city. We really, truly appreciate everyone in the city and for that partnership and that recognition. So thank you so much. Finally, uh, as Council Member Lucio mentioned, I just like want to, to call everyone's attention and invite them this Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, the Chena Valley Fire Foundation will hold the 14th annual car show. It's going to be at the shops just on the other side of the freeway there. All are welcome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that opportunity to get out and uh, be with everyone and uh, come on out and uh, enjoy the cars. With that, thank you very much and good evening. Thank you.
Uh, we are going to be recessing back into closed session, but before we do, I'd like to remind everyone that we are going to adjourn in the memory of Raul Garnica. Um, but in addition to that, um, Linda mentioned that Nick Ligori is leaving us. Uh, he's been with us for 20 years, and Nick, I want to acknowledge you tonight. Um, you told a cute story about how when you first came here, you went with Brent Arnold and, and walked out or drove down and then walked out to what is now the preserve, looked around to this vast open space with dairies and cows and everything that used to be down there, and, and Brent explained how it was going to be a magnificent city someday, part of our city. And, and I think your uh, comment was, okay. <laughs> well, you've been very, very instrumental in, in what we have down there, and I want to thank you very much for all of your efforts. Um, Civic Center Master Plan, of course. You and I have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe on some issues and haven't always been in agreement, but um, you're just a great guy to work with. Great family man, great dad, um, just a great human being. I'm going to miss you a lot, but I think there are better and greater opportunities ahead for you, and you know, God closes one door and opens another, and sometimes things are a lot better than what we currently experience, and we don't even know it until we're out there. So I wish you all the best. You still live in town, and you're going to stay in town because you have uh, a lot of investment here, and your parents live in the, uh, the ADU that you built for them as well. So thank you for staying in town, and I look forward to seeing you as just another citizen. Thank you, Nick, for all of your efforts. Okay, with that, we are uh, recessing to closed session, and we will be back in a bit. <laughs>